Well, welcome again. We're going to be discussing Chapter 2, Lesson 8, Graphing Linear and Absolute Value Inequalities. So these are our content standards. We do have constraints with our absolute value inequalities, well, with all of our inequalities. Today we're going to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. So previously you've described transformations on functions, and today we're going to graph linear inequalities, and we're going to graph absolute value inequalities. We just have a couple of new vocabulary words, linear inequality and boundary. A linear inequality re represents or resembles a linear equation, but with an inequality symbol instead of an equal symbol. The graph of the inequality is the boundary. It can be a dashed line like this one is, and the reason this one is dashed is because it's less than. It could also be dashed if it's just greater than. What's missing is the line underneath or equal to. That's what would make that boundary a solid line. So that's very important when you're graphing these to pay attention. Is it just less than or greater than or does it have the or equal to sign? So once we graph our inequality, then we have to test to see which side of this e equation is going to be uh, shaded. So the shaded region is a solution to um, the inequality. So if we test for 0, 0, so we're going to put, if, and we can only do that if 0, 0 is not on the boundary, and this one isn't. So instead of x, we'll put a 0. Instead of y, we'll put a 0. And that's quite easy since we come up with a less amount of mathematics, a less chance of making an error. Is 0 less than 4? Yes, it is. So that means that we're going to shade the reason, region that contains the point 0, 0. Because if 0, 0 makes it true, then everything on the, uh, this side of the uh, equation will make it true. These are all solutions to this inequality, everything that's shaded. Okay, so time to check your progress. Which graph is the graph of 2x plus 5y is greater than 10? So first of all, I look at the symbol greater than to see if it's going to be a dashed or a solid line. You can throw out a couple right away. So pause the video and solve this problem and then come back and check your answer. Okay, did you get A? Good job. We know right away we're going to throw out these solid lines because it's just greater than. So we're going to have a dashed and all we have to do is substitute 0, 0 in to see which one of these will make it true. When you substitute in 0, 0, um, you would get 0 is greater than 10, and that is not true. So we have to shade the region that does not contain 0, 0. Okay, a real world example. I'll let you pause for just a moment and read this. We've got to write an inequality and graph it. Okay, good job. So we're going to let x represent the verbal score and y the math score. And we know that because it's 900 or less, we're going to use the less than or it could equal 900. So less than or equal to symbol. So the verbal part and, which means we're going to add the math part together, are at most 900. So there's our inequality. And then when we graph it, we determine that everything on this side satisfies the equation. So does a student with a verbal score of 480 and a math score of 410 fit the tutoring company's guidelines? So if x is 410 since that's the verbal score and y, I mean 480 and 410 the math score is y, does it fall in the shaded region? So let's see, does 480, 400 fall? Yes it does. So we can say that this student fits the tutoring company's guidelines. Okay, check your progress. Here you get to write an inequality. So pause for a moment and then select your answer. So we're writing our inequality. The students plus chaperones have to be less than or equal to 60 because this bus only has enough seating for 60. So we can't have it greater than 60, so we're only looking at these two at most, but it could also equal 60. We can get 60 people on that bus. So now using that, can 15 chaperones and 47 students ride on the bus?
No, the point 14 or 1547 lies outside the shaded region. Plus, we can also do a quick check. 15 plus 47 is uh, higher than 60. It equals 62. So we, we would know very simply that that would not fit. Okay, now we're going to graph an absolute value inequality. Now, graphing an absolute value inequality is similar to graphing linear inequalities. The first thing we're going to do is graph the absolute value equation, then determine whether the boundary is dashed or solid. So what do you say, looking at this symbol? Good job. It is going to be solid. And then we're going to graph that equation. Now, you can use a table of values, so an xy table, to uh, choose uh, numbers for x to solve for y to see where you graph this inequality. Next we're going to test our region to see which region is going to be shaded. So since the origin 0, 0 does not fall on the boundary, we can test 0, 0. Now we're going to go back in this original inequality. Is 0 greater than or equal to 0 minus 2? Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 2? Yes, it is. So that tells us we're going to shade this region that contains 0, 0. Okay, time for you to check your progress. Graph y is less than the absolute value of x plus 3. So take just a moment. Okay, first of all, I know that um, I don't have to do all the work for the xy table because it looks like every one of these boundaries is the same. Now, is it going to be dashed or solid? Yes, it's going to be a dashed boundary. So we know we're looking at either B or C. So all we have to do now is test 0, 0 to see which one of them is going to work. And 0, 0 does make it true. 0 would be less than 3. So B is our answer. Awesome job, folks. You're ready to begin your exercises.